What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, uh, a lot of news has come out lately, and I was very, I was driving on my way home, and I was listening to Emergency Awesome, and he was talking about stuff that Brian was no surprise to me or to us, but confirmation to the speculation of, of thoughts that we had regarding Kevin Feige's um, time uh, and involvement in all these pieces of content that they were working on. This part of it was surprising to me when I, I was listening to Emergency Awesome today. He said that Kevin Feige's original thought was all, uh, um, even before Endgame, was to do a soft reboot after Secret War. Which is fine, great, fantastic. I like that idea. But the execution thus far, obviously, Brian, to all of us, uh, especially all of you guys that have been watching this, know that the execution has been uh, quite disappointing and we just wish it to end. What are your thoughts on the latest uh, news that has come out regarding Daredevil, Born Again. Brian, all this stuff just sort of not confirms, but reaffirms our thought about where this was going. We already had glimpses of it in She-Hulk. This was heading in that direction. We already saw King Ping in his Hawaiian shirt on the streets of wherever they were, the rough cities of wherever they were, right? Now there's supposedly a new direction. Wonder Man, Vision, everything has been blown up, Brian. What the hell is going on? Daredevil born again, dead again. That's what, I, that's, yes. that's, what, that's what it is. That's the title. Look, I think... There's a lot of, first off, there's a lot of things going on in Marvel this week, including the publication of much anticipated book, uh, MCU, The Reign of Marvel Studios, which I think will tie into this discussion. I, I got my copy. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. I'm very excited. I've listened to Joanna Robinson on, on podcast before she wrote the book, but she's been kind of dropping knowledge from the book as she's doing sort of a promotional tour. And I think it connects to what we're talking about here. So let's do the news and then we'll break it down. So Marvel, the thesis is Marvel TV is being restructured and blown up and they're starting over. That's the headline here. The, the, the fallout is you have the cancellation of Yaya Abdul-Mateen's Wonder Man series, the cancellation of Paul Bettany's Vision Quest spinoff and not cancellation, but the basically scrapping of a 50% completed 18 episode Daredevil Born Again series. And they're going back to, to storyboard square one with Matt Murdock. So that's effectively a cancel, it's a restart. Of, but something that was halfway done. You also have delays with no release dates on Ironheart. Um, the only things that are seemingly locked and i think only because they were complete in terms of their shooting are echo um agatha and i think there's one of there's one other series that's all that was also fully completed so you're gonna get a couple of shows that were done but i don't get the sense they're being released because marvel's super confident in them they're just con they're just putting them out because they're, they're finished they can't they can't wipe them out mm -hmm. So the, the overarching change that's being made is effectively that Marvel is now moving to more conventional television production. What does that mean? It means a more traditional showrunner, writer, season to season build of shows, as opposed to we're going to kind of shoot it and make it like we've been making our movies, but it's going to be longer and we're going to call it a TV limited series. That's basically what's happening. AKA, we feel in ourselves too much. We can do this ourselves. Let's keep doing what we were doing because it's working. We making money. Let's do it. 
And this is what we got. Yeah, which led Stephen DeKnight, who was the showrunner for Netflix's Daredevil, to dunk on Marvel with the one-line tweet, the experiment, thankfully, is over. <laughs> Shots fired after they, Ooh. you know. But hey, he's sitting on top of the mountain because Daredevil season one and three, ain't nobody complaining about those on Netflix. Ain't nobody complaining about what those. Are we, Brian, what have we been saying? Everybody that was involved in the first three, bring them back. You have jobs. You hit on it. But the weird thing is like Marvel's television failure and this is a failure. I mean, basically, they're admitting complete failure in terms of how they're approaching these shows. And finally saying, look, we got one good show, legitimately one good show that everyone agrees is good in Loki out of everything we try. Like, you know, WandaVision, okay. I think some, definitely some moments in Moon Knight, yeah. moments in Falcon and Winter Soldier. But this is an admission that the process has failed. But the weird thing is like Marvel TV, like you said about feeling themselves, it worked on the film side, right? They went bold, they went big, they took control, they founded Marvel Studios, they they basically solved the failings of Ben Affleck's Daredevil and Elektra and all these times where they handed away the IP to other studios and other machines and didn't get, you know, satisfying product. Marvel took command in, in Iron Man 1 and bet on itself and won big. So they effectively thought they could do that again and reinvent the wheel in terms of how they made prestige. That's what they thought this was going to be, prestige TV. And they've now run into the harsh reality that not only has that not worked, but far from enhancing the films, these TV shows have actually served to detract, compete with, and make a further mess of the, the stories, and we'll tie in some of the stuff that uh, from the book that's being touted in this regard. But Daredevil, so let's start with this, Pablo. I think, and I don't know what you're feeling, I am feeling that all of this, this is the butterfly effect of phase four not working. Because to me, when I see the Daredevil news, it suggests to me that that big Kevin Feige stage presentation where we got the announcement of Kang Dynasty and the announcement of Secret Wars, the announcement of a TV project and all these films, they weren't ready. They weren't ready to say that stuff. They only did it because they saw the momentum was turning against them. So they went to give the fans something they wanted to hear. And the reason I Look say forward that to, yes. is because the way the Daredevil cancellation or reboots being portrayed is basically that they didn't know what kind of show was being made until they started to see it come together. And they're like, whoa, 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 that's not what we wanted. That's not what we signed up. How is that possible? 18 episodes? How do you sit and go in front of the public and say, we got an 18 episode Daredevil show after a critically acclaimed Netflix show comes over to Disney. And then you don't have consensus on even what genre show you're going to make? Because it sounds like the showrunners were like, admitting defeat to Netflix already. Four okay. episodes is the report. How many scenes of Matt Murdock in the suit? Zero. What? <laughs> wow. Four episodes complete. He does not appear as Daredevil. To me, that is an admission that we can't compete with the fight choreography and the action that Netflix displayed, which was one of our primary concerns. And so Kevin Feige and Marvel are like, Wait a minute, this show can't be entirely in the courtroom. Well, no, Sherlock, of course not. It has to be a mix, but the confusion just suggests that they did not have a plan when they told the public, we're doing 18 episodes of this. Wow. It's crazy, man. If, if I could, and I had the, 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 if I would, if I had the time, Brian, I would go back to the, the good old days. <laughs> of, of of our praise of what we saw Marvel do and what Netflix did with Daredevil. What Netflix did with Daredevil, man, was I'll sh I'll sh if I knew who they were. Actually, Brian, one of my coworkers worked on the set of Daredevil 
in Netflix. So she she was there to and she rigged. She, I think she was a gapper, uh, but she was there for that fight scene with the the was it was it Nobu or who who, who well, did Nobu that? Nobu was the fight? main villain. Yeah, Nobu. He has several fights with Nobu, which in season yeah. one and season two. There's the hall, the single cam hallway fight, the single cam stairwell fight. I mean, these are groundbreaking scenes in TV action. And yeah, we know the personnel, Drew Goddard and Steven Knight. We know who is involved in this show. These, I mean, these are not nobodies. These are people that have done things before and have done things after. And they delivered a very serious take. They cast very well, as we know. I mean, D'Onofrio as Kingpin is, in, you know, was inspired casting. Um, but, and we, and it's funny, you can go back to the archives. We said when they, when, when Disney, when these shows reverted, we said, this is a whole different challenge. This is not Marvel trying to make amends for bad product. This is a, yo, don't screw this up. <laughs> the bar is high. Don't screw this up. And they screwed it up royally. Now I'm glad we actually won't get to see it because Thankfully. I think it would have been far worse had they put yes. this out and we'd be sitting here being like, excuse me, what? Like, yeah. we're four episodes in we haven't even seen him fight and we're like we got 18 episodes of this like yeah but it would have been like unnecessary nails in a coffin that's already yeah <laughs> they're coming back from that but, yeah i mean it, it does make me shudder to think what we are going to see of of charlie cox and d'onofrio in the echo series because we know that that basically was going to supposed to be the direct lead in to this series. And if that's the case, then I can't imagine what we're going to see in that show is going to be good. And by the way, we had also heard the reports that Echo was unwatchable, that what was delivered to Feige basically was unwatchable. And the only reason we're getting it is because it's done. For me, I wouldn't have given a damn. I'll be like, yo, we can't, we can't, I'm not putting yeah, pull this Pull it back, girl. Now, that's the thing, right? Like WB kind of like set the president and took the heat for that. I'm like, you can kind of do that, I guess, if you want. But yeah, but what happens if you do? Yeah, you burn, you burn bridges, no question. So You burn bridges and you anger Yeah, no, no question. There's no doubt. But that didn't stop WB. They don't care. So I, I just... <laughs> look, I mean, I think, like I said, the thing, that, the thing that's interesting is I'm not surprised there would be more courtroom in Daredevil because if there's one thing that Netflix, you know, did, they didn't, they didn't put Charlie Cox in terms of trying cases a whole lot. I mean, they really focused on the nighttime. Even before he had the suit, he was out on the street um, fighting crime. And so I get why you would want to do a little more in the courtroom, but it can't go the, it can't go all the way to the other end of the spectrum. It Certainly. Can't. Like we expect Certainly. brilliant combat in this series. And, and if there wasn't going to be any, then it almost, you know what it reminded me of was the blade thing where we heard the thing where there were like two fight scenes in that first version of blade. It's like, what are we, do? what are we doing? We got martial it's like, arts characters and we don't let them do martial arts. What's going on? Yeah. It's like, it's like giving me a Batman movie with only scenes of Bruce Wayne in it. <laughs> what are you doing? What are we doing here? There has to be a balance. Yeah. You know, and, um, and not to veer off, but just to make, just to mention it, one of the things that we're looking for towards the Batman is that is that that balance. And if yeah. it's lacking in this next film, Brian, I'm going to have issues. Many yeah, people Bruce, will have Bruce issues. If Bruce Wayne makes no progress in the second film, then on some of the praise we heaped on the first film, we will have to retract a little bit. I'm not worried yeah. about it, but that clearly yeah. is a, a concern. One of the things that was interesting that... that the excerpt from the book that's being promoted is and this ties to the daredevil thing is just how chaotic it sounds like this process was and this is where the feige thing comes in where it's like the whole premise it sounds like and i got through, i haven't read the whole section yet so this is robinson's words is that basically think of kevin feige as like he's the gatekeeper to every project that has always been the case so like in the, when they were just doing films, it would be like they, the filmmaker, they generally have an agreement on an idea. The filmmaker does a cut, they deliver the material, but Feige, even though he's a producer, he's receiving the material and he's giving the definitive feedback on where it goes and whether it goes. And obviously that has caused some friction with some filmmakers creatively, but as we suspected, the more product there was, it was still just Kevin Feige 
who was receiving these cuts. And that's why you start, I think that's why we started to see these articles where it was like, when Feige got a hold of it, he's like, this is unwatchable. But it shows as he was getting stretched thinner and thinner, he wasn't as close to the process. He would just only appear when things were done. And so yeah. they were saying like, even like WandaVision, like Elizabeth Olsen apparently had like no idea what her character was supposed to be from the series to Doctor Strange 2. Even though if you watch Doctor Strange 2, you can't really understand what happened unless you saw WandaVision. So if the star herself has no idea what the notes are for her character, how are we supposed to kind of yeah, yeah, get in yeah. tune with that? But it again speaks to they were trying to make Brad Winderbaum the TV Feige. They were trying to make these other parliament members be Feige, and there is no other Kevin Feige. And and even Feige then, as we saw, was starting to kind of maybe feel himself and lose some of his touch in terms of what the directions to go in. And so, yeah, it, it, it kind of sounds like Marvel, as it was designed and conceived originally, was never really meant to be scaled the way that they've scaled it. Because it was yeah. so reliant on this one person being the funnel for everything. And I don't think they, they still haven't solved that problem. Kevin Feige hasn't found his Tim Cook. And I don't think... I mean, it's a difficult task to find someone who has done something who we thought could never do something like this. So we thought something like this could never be done, but we saw it happening right in front of our very eyes and he accomplished that and kudos to him for doing so. But there, there comes the, you know, obviously there's always the rise and fall of every sure. success story, right? Uh, it seems that he's trying to write the ship this time in a more aggressive manner, Brian. Perhaps he's, I would like to think that he's listened to our show and he's had enough. <laughs> I, might suspect he's, I might suspect he's more listening to the stock going from like 180 to 80. True, true, <laughs> That, true, that true, might true, speak a little true. louder than, than Nurgent, but true. I, 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 uh, so. But I think the other thing, the book, apparently says is that this whole narrative that the saturation of Marvel and all this inundation we've gotten with TV product and film product was a Bob Chapek problem is BS. That it's actually Iger before he left who demanded this and it was Chapek yeah. who carried it out. And now it is Iger who is left to fix what the book portrays as his own mistake. Wow. Wow. All I can say is John Campy has a lot of uh, uh, <laughs> apologizing to do to uh, for, to Bob Ch Chapek for, for, for making him the guy, uh, the fall guy for all that's gone, that's gone wrong with the MCU. And it's Big Papa Iger, as he likes to call him. And... and, and <laughs> I gotta watch the show now to see what's up to see what he has to say about this because <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, he left that on top, and there was more, there was orders to continue. I guess the the the, sure. the, the ascension right to towards higher feet, and there was no really no quality control really. And that's what the TV news is really saying, right? The TV news is saying we can't. There is no in house Kevin Feige. The people we have in the parliament are not good enough to do what we need them to do. So when you say that I'm, we're going to move to a traditional structure with established showrunners, that's code for we are going to hire outside to bring in people who have made TV shows before. So listen, if you want to hey. you daredevil, now's the chance to call the Netflix guys and say, look, we screwed this up. What's it going to take? for you guys to come make this more like Daredevil season four, as opposed to Daredevil born again. Two things. Number one, um, find out uh, if you know anybody so we can get, try to put in our resume so we can get one of those jobs, Brian. <laughs> Number two, if you're in their position now, 
This is business. This is business. If you're in their position, now you're calling us to perhaps, Brian, they were hoping for that call back, right? And it didn't happen. They wanted to do their own thing. Now they're going to call them, right? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe maybe not. But if they do, let's say you're one of them, one of the writers, one of the showrunners. What are you, what do you say to them? How do you approach that situation? Do you immediately say, yes, let's do it. I've been waiting to do this or well, let's sit down and talk. Well, I say yes, but I want clear parameters on what showrunner really means. I don't want, right? It's like, I, I basically like, I'll tell you what I want. I want what Tony Gilroy got with Andor. That's my model, right? If I'm established, not everyone's as high profile as him, but if I'm established as a writer, as a showrunner, and I've made successful, profitable TV, I want in my contract that there won't be four or five other Marvel people in the room telling me what show to do. That's the risk, right? That's the risk and the reward. It's like, if you want me as an established person to run the show, then I need to run the show. There can't be me submitting a cut to Kevin Feige, Brad Winderbaum, or anyone else, and then having it thrown in my face. It's, not, it's like, it's my show, for better or for worse. And given that these individuals who were at the helm of these shows at Disney Plus, you're asking them to give up a lot of say, yep. right? And this is going to be a lot of friction. I know there's going to be a lot of friction. Oh, yeah. Because if you hire a showrunner, a, a legit dude, you I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. <laughs> I mean, you're basically, you're basically like, I want the part, you're dissolving the parliament. That's basically yeah. what you're doing. You're saying these people don't have authority anymore. We're reassigning them to something else, you know. But there's a risk to that, as we know. You 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 know you can like we laud Daredevil, but Netflix also made Iron Fist, so we have to be fair. Like True that. that approach did, did not bat a thousand. The Defenders was a massive disappointment in the end because they lost momentum across their shows. <laughs> never really thought I'd say this, but if we're talking about like who was probably the most consistent, albeit I would never say classic in terms of this, it's Greg Berlanti, right? I mean, the WB TV universe, he figured out a formula that people watched to pretty good ratings. I mean, all of his shows went at least four seasons. They were all kind of the same in terms of the format and the formula, mm. but he got a machine up and running that the studio was happy with and that ratings came in. Mm. That's kind of honestly like what marvel's probably aiming for they're aiming for better shows obviously but like the idea that idea of yeah, they, very they, they, consistent yeah. quality right yeah it's hard. they haven't gotten that run they haven't gotten that run it's been one and then maybe two right. or we don't know but there That's hasn't really been that like one CW, banger right. and so other CW, than loki say, look we got nine seasons of arrow we got nine seasons of flash we've got superman and lois which people generally like and then we got yeah, you know yeah. with some other shows that didn't go so well with like flash is not a nice season <laughs> but i'm saying but that <laughs> yeah 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 it went it went yes, 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 he won yes, that's a yes, win yeah, 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 i got yeah, nine course, seasons sir. that's a win but i'm happy that is happening because yeah. i'd rather not see i'd rather see new stuff from other stuff then whack stuff from the stuff that we've been getting that yeah, we absolutely. usually tend to like. Yeah, and I don't want, listen, like, cance I'm all for canceling Wonder Man, canceling Vision Quest. I wish they could cancel Agatha. Like, go ahead and cancel Ironheart if you want to. Like, I don't care. Like, I don't want to see bad product di or risky product diluting the airwaves when, like, quite honestly, I think there's better, stronger characters you could, you could use um, in, in the TV format, maybe more reliable characters, you know, that, that you could lean on. So yeah, take your time. There's no rush. It's no rush. Yeah. Like no kid is going to their parents and being like, wonder man got canceled. Drop my Disney plus. <laughs> They're still going to pay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. And we've gone a little bit over, but, um, 
Yeah, Marvel, I guess, has seen the light. And now things, hopefully, Kevin has heard enough of the... Uh, when he's out in the supermarket and somebody yelling at him, the MCU is whack. And he, you know what I'm saying? And, he, and now he's like, he's... he. The, I was talking to Freddie. And... I, I, was it Freddie or Tracy? One of those two guys. And we said the strike was the best thing for this. For the MCU, for the W. It's, it's been the best thing. Why? Because right now, since you can't do nothing else, you might as well take a look at what you've done and do it better. And listen, actually listen. Forget about the yes people. And listen to, now you, I'm pretty sure you have more people telling you, yo, this is whack, yo. What are you doing over there? Right? As we talk, the Marvel's uh, commercial comes on. That's a part two of Marvel yeah, we'll news. talk about movies, yeah, and stuff. But, um, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, the Daredevil show being um, retooled. And reworked yet again, but now with the realization that we are not capable. And when I say we, the MCU uh, execs or the ones who are in charge of making shows over at uh, Disney Plus for Marvel, they've realized that this is not what they do. And it took millions and millions of dollars to realize it. For that, there is no, there's no, there's no uh, coming back from that. And unfortunately, you're going to have to find other jobs. Let us know in the comment section below uh, what you, and let us know what you guys think about that. Hit the notification bell. Hit that like, please hit that like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on! Yeah!